Hello and welcome to another episode of the Personal Record Podcast. I am your host, Timothy Clark. It has been a little while since uh, you guys last heard from me. It's actually been uh, several months since I released my last, last episode. Uh, unfortunately, life kind of gets in the way sometimes and you need to uh, adapt and grow as you continue to move forward. So we, take it, we took a little bit of a break, but now we're back. It's 2020. I missed the new year. I missed my little wrap-up of uh, my 2019 season. Uh, but like anything else, it was absolutely spectacular. Uh, had some great guests and did some really, really great things in 2019. I'm looking to do that even more in 2020. Uh, in 2020, I'm looking to take a bit of a tangential turn, and uh, we're starting that with my first guest of the year, which is uh, Rob Maloney. Rob Maloney is not your traditional personal record podcast guest in that uh, he has run marathons, but that's not what he's known for. His, uh, his, his thing, the thing that he's really into is CrossFit. He is actually the co-owner, head coach, and head programmer of the CrossFit Island Park uh, gym out here in Island Park, Long Island. Um, he has done some uh, pretty incredible things in the world of CrossFit, including uh, the 2014 Northeast Regional CrossFit Games, Wada Palooza in 2016, 16. Uh, and the World's Toughest Mutter in uh, 2012, which actually we touched upon once before with Joe Redmond, uh, who was on this podcast, who I think competed at that with you. Uh, and that is uh, quite quite the spectacular event. The reason I bring Rob on here is because not only is he uh, uh, like a, a a very knowledgeable person in the world of fitness, in the world of uh, exercise science and physiology, uh, but he has an interesting take on CrossFit and how it's related to endurance sports, specifically how it's related to running, uh, and that's why we have him on here today. Before he got into the world of CrossFit, he had actually run several marathons and, and more than a dozen half marathons, and he says his experience having done that has served him really well as he continued to uh, uh, get better, bigger, and stronger in the world of CrossFit. So uh, that's what we're here to talk to him about. But th- uh, Rob, thank you very much for joining us, and welcome to the Personal Record Podcast. Thanks for having me. Uh, I should also note that Rob is the, you can't tell this in uh, uh, personal in podcast land, uh, Rob is the most handsome man I've had on the uh, on the show Only if right it's now. on video. <laughs> That's right. It is on video. Well, this will be posted on YouTube at some point somewhere. Uh, so go to YouTube and uh, follow me on, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, but yeah, so we're here at, in uh, Island Park at his CrossFit gym, uh, and I'm actually going to be spending some time in one of his classes after this podcast is done recording. You probably should have done it before. This way I couldn't talk. Well, I don't, oh. know. I don't, I don't, know, I don't know how. I don't know how. We'll do a post-game wrap-up. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> we will. Yeah, just and then just me struggling to uh, stand up out of breath. Uh, but again, so uh, what I want to talk to you about was uh, you had posted something on Instagram, uh, and and I reached out to you. Rob, I should mention, is also from Bay Ridge, and we're actually we've known each other pretty much our whole lives. Yeah. Uh, you had posted something saying that your uh, CrossFit being what it is, and I think everyone has uh, certain uh, predispositions about CrossFit. But you actually said that your endurance career or your 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 marathoning and half marathoning leading into crossfit was actually one of the reasons why you became so successful at it can you tell me a little bit about that absolutely uh so before crossfit i ran probably for the better part of two two and a half years and just strictly running the majority of every week uh did i do it the right way probably not at first i learned uh and then as I felt more comfortable with it, I, uh, I was running actually less days a week, but, uh, just the experience in the endurance factor of it definitely put me in a very, very advantageous position when starting CrossFit. So being in classes and as long as there wasn't weight that was, uh, slowing me down, if it was just a moderate or or lightweight or we were running or rowing, uh, I was well ahead of the pack. And my lungs just could handle it for the entire time. That's a big problem I find in most people. You know, you, you might look the big, strong guy that can throw a lot of weight around, but he can't do it for very long. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the exercise science behind that? Like, what 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 is the difference between being anaerobic, being aerobic, and, and how do you train for those two different uh, disciplines? Oh, absolutely. Uh, so we actually have specialty classes in the gym that focus on those. Uh, I run the aerobic one, the we call it the engine. Uh, so that is learning gears, uh, mainly your, just your ability to move for a long period of time. So we're going to be doing, uh, any of the machines, the rower, the bike, uh, the skier, we're going to be running and then using low skill movements. So those that there is, 
not a chance you're going to be slowing down because of the the load of the weight or the the high technique of the skill all right so it's going to be low skill we're going to be able to do burpees or lunges stepping up on a box uh jumping rope not not the skill of something like a double under that we see in crossfit but just regular skipping rope just to keep the body moving elevate the heart rate uh and putting a a pace at that so that it's sustainable. So, for example, one thing I may say is we're going to move at, for 20 minutes, doing X, Y, and Z. We're going to take a 5 or 10 minute rest, and we're going to do it again. And see if we can repeat it and sustain that pace. Because we want to be able to move for a very long period of time. Can we repeat this 5 or 6 times? Versus that anaerobic stuff, which is unsustainable efforts right two two three minute efforts right all that, out yeah. and leave you on your back any of the engine stuff you should be able to walk away you should be able to breathe have a conversation after any of the anaerobic stuff uh that alactic we call it the octane program in here uh that stuff is going to leave you gassed some people throwing up <laughs> uh but just putting yourself in a in an extremely uncomfortable position uh and that needs a lot longer rests in between sets. The the aerobic stuff, yeah, you can rest for a few minutes and then continue at that pace. The that lactic stuff is you need a big gap of rest, and not everybody understands that. So that that power output is not always a, attained because not everybody is able to get there because they're not understanding the the goal there. So it sounds like the the engine workout is pretty accessible to a newer. CrossFit person. If somebody, so if somebody was trying to uh, get into CrossFit, that's probably where they should start. Absolutely. That's where I suggest everybody mm-hmm. builds that, that their engine before even attempting anything else. And so you're saying that you had that engine or more of that engine leading into your, 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 you said you, uh, you, you ran the Miami marathon a week later, joined your first CrossFit yeah. gym. Uh, so you're saying that your world, uh, as a runner helped prepared you for that, for that 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 transition yeah absolutely my engine was as far as that is concerned it was even better then did you find was there did you struggle between so you're obviously running as a a pretty you know you're aerobically fit you have a your high aerobic capacity uh but your muscular endurance is mostly in your legs did you did you struggle with muscular endurance in your upper body Um, during that transition not really because i was you were never like a you know you were never like a skinny scrawny runner i was doing other things in the gym uh I was doing pull-ups, push-ups, uh, using kettlebells, never doing like, any of the stuff I do now with heavier weights. So I was doing weights that I can handle for a good number of reps, 10 or 20 reps at a time. Mm-hmm. Uh, way different from from what I have since focused on and, and tested out to be able to implement in the programs here. In my personal experience, uh, in the last few years, I've done a little bit more of crossfit high-intensity kind of workouts, and I've actually found that it's helped me in tremendous ways in, in my running and triathlon world. Uh, I've actually found, you know, th- there's a big uh, propensity in the endurance world to say, I need to be lean, I need to be skinny, I need to be light, because, you know, the, the, the lighter you are, the faster you'll run in theory, you know. Uh, 100 the, my two worst Ironmans was when I was at my lightest and probably my two best was in not, not my heaviest but kind of up around my right. heaviest uh and I a lot of that has to do with just like the, your musculature like Absolutely. the more you build your upper body musculature the more you're running uh efficiently the more you're maintaining your form and uh the, the more you maintain your form the more efficient you're, you're you are throughout the period of a day uh, and that doesn't come by just running lots of miles and, and being skinny and being lean. You have to be strong. You have to be fit. Absolutely. Uh, the the biggest thing when any new member comes in here is we put them through a movement assessment. And the, the very first thing is assessing the core. Can they maintain stability in their core? Everything's built out from there. Every, everything's core to extremity. So uh, from there is can we pass these – these specific tests holding plank in each of the side planks and the prone uh for 90 seconds if we're not able to do that we got some homework to do 90 seconds kind of a long time (laughs) yeah but it does transfer or i have a weak uh uh, weak core which is very possible it does it does transfer uh for the other things that 
we're looking to do. So if we're looking to move a barbell, are you putting yourself in the safest position possible to do that? Uh, running, a little different because you're not holding load, but depending on the amount of intensity or the distance you're running, yeah, you're constantly putting load on your lower body and your core because everything else is following. They, that's actually really, you see this in older triathletes a lot of times, you know, as, as the day is wearing on, you know, 15, 16 plus hour sort of days, you start to see a lot of people do what's called the Ironman shuffle, where they just bent over at the hip and just, and just moving, moving, moving in a direction. And they, and like their head is, is, you know, as high as their, as their, as high as their waist, cause they just can't support their body anymore. Which again, you know, if, if you're running a marathon, you know, three, four, five hours, you know, the extent to which your, your, your core muscles will fail you is limited. But if you're, again, if you're out there 15, 16 hours, you know, just holding yourself upright becomes a challenge. And you see, you see it all the time. It happens at the end of every single marathon. And that's exactly what that is. It's an inability to do planks. It's an, it's a, it's a, it's a we- total weakness in your core. And athletes spend so much time focusing on their legs. And, you know, if you're swimming, it's focusing on your arms that you just miss the big meaty right. part in the middle. Uh, and it's such an important thing to focus on. Uh, and I think CrossFit's a really great thing for endurance athletes uh, to use in, in terms of cross training. I, I think it's I think it's a really uh, it's a, it could be really beneficial. In fact, if you're trying to up your aerobic capacity, I find this. I, there's only so many miles I can run in a week. The, when right. I start to hit the upper extremes of my miles, that's when I start to get hurt, especially as I'm getting older. And so what I need to do is then find another way to jack up the heart rate. Uh, you know, for, for these maximal type efforts with, with minimal types of re- type of rest to work on my, my aerobic capacity. But I need to find ways to do that that, that don't include running. Because again, just that, that pounding and pounding and pounding just destroys me. Uh, and, and doing, again, high intensity type CrossFit workouts, whether it's, you know, involving some sort of rower or an assault bike has been really beneficial for me. Absolutely. I, I get that. I get that aerobic capacity. I get that aerobic output without the damage, the musculature damage that comes with, uh, with high volume running. Yeah, absolutely. And the the assault bike is probably it's the least uh you know, it's the least risk for injury and has the greatest uh reward out of any of the machines. Yeah, I agree with that. There, there's there's a guy that I, I do some workouts with every now and then. He so I you know, I'm the runner and triathlete, so uh but he, and he's like a CrossFit guy. He's been doing it a long time. I can main him and I can row pretty similar numbers. We can erg bike pretty similar numbers and he crushes me on the assault bike it's crushes the of, me the power output yeah i just i just don't have it i don't have the power i, but, I, I can put but out if if i asked you guys to go at a certain rpm for 60 minutes my bet is that you'll hold it and he can't yeah fuck that guy i'll take him down i have to, <laughs> to pull him. he's a good friend of mine i have to pull him out and say like i have to come up with some challenge for him he always gears uh whenever we work out together it's always a workout geared toward his strength i'll give you mine. a few <laughs> i appreciate that <laughs> All right. Uh, so you also mentioned that you're actually uh, working with a, a high level swimmer at this gym. So uh, somebody that's competing at a pretty high level is using CrossFit to uh, to, to cross train. Uh, tell me a little bit about that process and, and what you utilize. What what aspects of CrossFit are you utilizing to to optimize her swimming performance? Awesome. Uh, yeah. So she is she's 39 years old. Uh, she's she was a competitive swimmer in college, and then she she's had two kids she's looking to get she is competing again she's competing in local events she's going to be competing uh at nationals in april in texas uh and her real goal is when she's 40 uh in her early early 40s to be competitive with her times in uh in a few different races so i she swims th- five days a week uh out of Eisenhower Park. She has a swim team, swim coach, uh, and I train her three days a week in here. She also comes in another So she's five days a week swimming, three days a week here? Yeah, so she'll double up some days. Mm -hmm. She has uh, one to two off off days, uh, either just completely off or some active recovery, just moving on on like the bike erg. Uh, So our days together are- A bike erg, for those who don't know, is just basically a stationary bike. It's a flywheel bike, yeah. yeah. It just measures like your watt outputs and stuff like that, and you can you can up the the resistance of the damper. It's the same system as the rower. So Mondays, I have Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Mondays will be a engine type workout. We're gonna move for 
40 to 60 minutes straight, uh, just low intensity. Just she she swims Sunday and Monday morning, so we want to su- just have sustainability. Just there. her her ability to perform full body work for 40 for a long minutes, period of time. Right? Yeah, uh, Tuesday is all strength, so we're not going to do any lactic stuff. We're not doing engine stuff. We're just building strength, uh, and whatever cycle. I may have a run of upper body, lower body, or some combination of that, um, making sure that we're doing both unilateral, so single leg, single arm stuff, and bilateral. So a lot of misconception is people think legs, let's squat, squat, squat. But if you can't lunge, you can't step up with uh, with a certain amount of weight, then your your balance is off as well. So this is a personal question for me. So are you saying that... Uh before you have somebody starting to do squats, you'll start them off with lunges or you'll just, or both? Or I assess of... their, their ability to do single leg stuff before bilateral. Interesting. Okay. And I've, with, I've been struggling with, with low, runner, lower back problems actually. I'd have you do single leg stuff. Oh shit. Okay. So I should steer clear of, of squats at least until you're ready. Single leg squats, lunge, step well, up. Well, I'm saying like weighted squats, right. you know, back squats, you know, yeah. I, I, I struggle gonna... with those. I don't, I don't, I don't think my, my form is perfect and I, I just, I get a lot I started uh, suddenly doing, not suddenly, but I started incorporating more squat and deadlifts into my workouts, trying, hopefully trying to, again, I've been struggling with some injury, trying to build the musculature to help protect my body from, mm-hmm. again, the volume of, uh, of miles that I've been trying to put in. I've been having some lower back problems, which I've always dealt with, uh, but it's become a little bit more chronic lately. And I was initially blaming the deadlifts for the lower back pain, which could possibly be, but I'm, now mm-hmm. I'm starting to think that it's more of the squats that I've been doing. Uh, and again, I think it's more of a form issue for me than than anything else. Uh, but it's maybe I should be doing more like lunges and single leg. We can go over some stuff. <laughs> yeah, in the gym after. There we go. Six o'clock class is what we'll talk about. Uh, yeah. So Tuesdays are strength focused day. Uh, sometimes she'll feel like, and this is with any class, if it's a, just a strength focused day, they'll say, "Oh, we didn't get a workout." Yeah, you did. You got the stimulus for the day. Mm-hmm. Not every day is, is going to be high intensity. Not every day is going to be a, a long aerobic piece. Um, and then Thursday is the pain train. It's, let's use the assault bike. Let's use the sled. Let's get very uncomfortable. Uh, and those are the days that are not so, not so much fun, but super effective. And they have the most uh, results. And you can see it transfer well to the actual sport. Sure. So, so it sounds to me like the, the three days you're giving her are, again, one, it, it sounds to me like, like a lactic effort, uh, some sort of muscular endurance, just again, your ability to do work over extended periods of time. Then you just have a straight up anaerobic strength workout. And then you have this aerobic capacity workout, right? which is, I mean, the three big, <laughs> the, exactly the three, the three what measures of Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. And then, and then she's obviously doing, you know, probably some versions of those three disciplines in her in swimming. swimming. Absolutely. Uh, and I would imagine she's in pretty good shape. Yeah. So what, would you do anything different or how different would it be if you were training somebody for specifically, let's say running? Uh, it'd be pretty similar. Or uh, better, better question. Uh, have you dealt with runners and do they come in with, uh, again, they have like the, the aerobic capacity that you're talking about, but are there things that they tend to be weaker at in CrossFit as a result of their their running careers? Um, yes, uh, a lot of people that do come in and do uh, either triathlons or or run specifically, they they do find themselves to stay out of the gym more often when the weather's nicer, which is not necessarily something that I suggest. The the combination of both is very effective and using the gym to, to throughout the on, year, throughout and the not, year, not just, not just period, not just saying, all right, I'm going to, yeah. And some people just, they just feel the need to, Oh, I'm just going to run every day now that it's warmer out. Uh, but having that healthy combination can be very effective. Uh, but everyone also has their own specific goals individually. Uh, and another thing I was just talking about the other day with my business partner is, there's a number of people that are goal oriented, result oriented, and then there's others that are just process oriented. They love the journey. They're not. They don't care about that end result. They just love the journey. Who do you uh, Who do you enjoy coaching more? Um, 
I enjoy being a goal oriented person. I enjoy coach, <laughs> coaching goal oriented people because but you'll you keep the process people longer. Yeah, and they they enjoy it so much that they're always looking for the process. Mm-hmm. So let's talk a little bit about uh, CrossFit in general. I think CrossFit has had some uh, PR. I don't want to say problems, but just some PR. Uh, th- there have been some myths about CrossFit that I think a lot of people, and a lot of that has to do with injury and, and overtraining and things of that nature. To what extent has CrossFit, uh, to what extent is that a myth? To what extent is that was that true? And then CrossFit has uh, uh, fixed it. To what extent is that true and you've fixed it? Uh, all right. So CrossFit has and, has and still has, has, it has had and still has a pretty – rough connotation in a lot of people uh and leaves a bad taste in people's mouth and it i think it's just going to continue for a bit because uh very early on it was let's go as hard as possible every single day and that's how we're going to get better and that's how people have seen results but it's not sustainable Mm -hmm. uh so so there there was some truth to the to the there's absolutely okay and uh i'm sure that's (laughs) with any field if you you go at it a hundred percent at all times you're gonna you're gonna find yourself injured in some cases or uh setbacks but uh as far as crossfit hq uh they have taken a, a turn from it being the sport focus to they're looking to make the healthcare the focus and making everyday people their focus uh rather than the the stage of the sport and it's it's changed the last couple years uh they've pulled funding they've they've fired uh a lot of their staff because they're not looking to be the business of a sport they're looking to be the business of health crossfit is crossfit okay and so you're saying so we talked about this a little bit before we started recording to what extent did cross the crossfit games help or hurt that, that I, image I be- and, and then the reality of what, of what I was. believe the, the CrossFit games completely helped the the platform to okay. f- of the methodology of CrossFit uh, I don't know if they went about it the right way of how they treated the sport and how they are continuing to versus their their switch to all right healthcare is our focus uh, I, I should also mention, but for those that don't know, the health, the CrossFit Games are basically just uh, a, a series of, of competitions, you know, like tranches of competitions that lead up into the CrossFit right. Games. Right. So the CrossFit Games season starts, well, it, it has changed since, but now it starts in October with the Worldwide Open. It's five weeks, a workout each week. Uh, the top 20 now in the world get a invitation to the Games, which is in july or august uh and then throughout the year now there's certain sanctional events there's probably about 20 now all over the world uh the same style of qualifying is done to go to those and the the top male and female and team get invitations uh so it's changed a lot from when i competed at the the regional level because they did away with regionals everything was crossfit sanctioned and now they they kind of like franchise it out Mm -hmm. a competition can be through crossfit they pay a certain fee uh and then they hold hold their event and those athletes who who win go to compete at the games uh which a lot of the cases it's it is the same level of athletes same athletes are going that we're going uh the same people are winning so the the system's not broken to find the the fittest in crossfit but uh it's also allowing more people to compete at those higher level events uh, for those that are still looking to do that. Right. And so you're saying that the, the games themselves uh, built the brand of CrossFit, uh, and that, but then it, it took uh, some, some shakeups within the organization itself to say that we're not just a sport. We are a health-based uh, system, I guess. Absolutely. The, uh, well, the founder and CEO... Greg Glassman is really has nothing to do with the competition aspect of it. He's all about the healthcare, uh, and you rarely see him in any interview or he, he does some podcasts, but, uh, he's, he basically stays in the, 
he stays in the back and in the world of wellness. And, yeah. He and he does not look like the most well man, but <laughs> but he's very he's very knowledgeable and and he's doing something right. Sure. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, all right. So the myth. So you, so you're saying that the 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 myth that people get hurt from uh, being uh, uh, from training too hard too often which i've said this on the podcast a number of times the worst thing that's ever happened to fitness was the rocky movies uh and i think youtube isn't doing fitness a, a huge service no. right now because you see a lot of anybody these, can do anything on YouTube. right right you see a lot of these you know jocko willink like get up at 4 30 in the morning and crush a workout you know for whatever and yeah you got to push yourself that's absolutely 100 you have to do it uh it's a part of it's it's, it's part of the fun of it is it being able to push yourself and, and getting through those kind of suffer fest from time to time, but not every session can be a suffer fest. And this is true for running triathlon CrossFit or anything. You're just not your ability to perform work over that period of time. Like think about a construction worker. Imagine a construction worker went into every single day swinging an ax around like, you know, like there was no tomorrow. You just, you have, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a marathon, not a sprint, especially if you want to, uh, stay in it for the long haul and just maintain a high level or higher level of fitness, uh, for an extended period of time. You know, it's, 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 you gotta really, uh, compose yourself. Uh, but I, I, what I wanted to ask you was you mentioned lactic, uh, workouts earlier. Now lactic workouts for those who don't know is, uh, your body's kind of always producing lactic acid and, and a lactic workout is kind of the point or your lactic threshold is the point at which your body is, is washing away as much lactic acid as it's producing. Uh, and if you do a lactic workout, what you're doing is you're, you're working on your body's ability to, like we said earlier, perform work over an extended period of time. Do you use things like heart rate? to with your athletes to to maintain to figure out where that lactic threshold is or is it more of a a, a perceived effort uh we don't use heart some people in the in the gym do wear some type of heart rate monitor for their personal use yeah um do you ever use it i don't and i haven't uh i'm personally just not interested in it i can (laughs) i can kind of feel it sure uh but the way i i set up certain certain workouts in uh in the program is we're going to find that threshold uh and the the assault bike or the the airdyne bike whichever is the probably the best tool for that uh, and there's different different intervals and and workouts we can do the the sled is also a great tool for that as well and again the, i mean you, so you you find the threshold th- through perceived effort Correct. Using these these and devices. using using whatever the um, how would you do it with the the indications of of the monitor uh, distance versus time. Oh, interesting. Oh, okay. Um, and and how much load we can push for that distance? So keeping we did one. Uh, I think it was every th- three minutes for as long as you can, a thirty meter sled push, and as long as you can keep it. 20 seconds or under you can keep going up and wait hmm. i like that that's pretty good so you uh i've heard you refer to something that you call an ip athlete yeah can you tell me a little bit about what is an ip athlete so ip athlete is our ideal athlete our ideal member in the gym um a uh, recent post that's I, being an island park athlete, right. right um and since since creating the IP logo. It's it's taken on a few different things. It's uh, as things do. Yeah, it's it's. I've used it for intentional programming or uh, a number of other things. Uh, but the IP athlete is a thinking athlete, knowing why you're doing things, not going into things blindly. Uh, that's why communication between uh, myself and the other coaches, and as well as the coaches as a whole and the athletes is so important uh and that's that should be in any any sport any athletic event uh because that that is where early in crossfit those injuries and that bad taste in people's mouth that's where it came from because it was very little coaching uh a lot of all right this is what we're going to do and just go as hard as you can versus all right i've learned from that that doesn't really last I get the effect I want for a short period of time, uh, but I can't do that again. So is uh, an IP athlete or a thinking athlete, is that, do you think that's something that needs to be developed? Or is this something that when somebody comes in, you're saying, you know, you, you try to start instilling that initially? Um, 
or, or is that something that you just develop over time with, with, with some experimentation, pushing your limits, maybe seeing what goes a little bit too of, far? A little bit of both. Um, anyone coming in, we're going to do our best to give them the the resources and the direction uh, and the open platform to ask questions mm-hmm. as they need to. As they, if, if you don't understand something, feel free to ask. It's more than okay. Uh, do because, people re- like ask a lot? Do they? Do they? Are they inquisitive about why you're doing what you're doing to them? Do they? A number do, of do they people care are. about the exercise science behind it. Yeah, uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to say about half. Mm-hmm. Uh, others, I do with the program. I write out every day of what is the intent of the day, what's the stimulus, uh, take into consideration what we've done the last day, the last week what's coming up. These are for your individual athletes. This is for the, the gym as a whole. Oh, wow. So that um, right there is a sign of a good coach. I don't care what sport you're looking at. If you, if you're able to plan out, uh, some period of time, whether it's a a week, a month, a year in advance, uh, not a year, a year is a little much, but you know, plan out, plan out some type of idea. Right. 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 Some, some sort of structure, some sort of outline. And then, like you said, just have intent behind all the workouts that you're doing. That's the sign of a good coach as opposed to somebody who just is showing up and saying, you know, here's how we, you know, let's just, I don't know, throw a bunch of eggs against the wall and see which ones don't break. And and a lot of gyms uh, were doing that early on. Uh, Some, uh, I don't doubt if some still do. Uh, One thing that I just uh, have made some posts about and we're going into it and starting this upcoming weekend is our program in the gym is going to be password protected so that only our members and any outside subscribers who want it, they get a the password. It cha- it's going to change monthly. Uh, just because I've seen the the want and the need for, not, ne- not necessarily the want as much as the need for the complete structure of, all right, this is what we're doing. This is what we have done. Here's the map of the next 8 to 12 weeks, and this is the intent for every day. We should be feeling this. Here's our approach for the day. Here's some modifications. Because uh, just the time and effort that put I put into it. Uh, yeah, that, that's just I, I want it to be used the right way. I, people ask me uh, if if I would coach them fairly often, and uh, I I want to, but I just can't because I don't think people understand the amount of time and effort that goes into building a plan. For somebody again, depending on you know, it doesn't matter the sport, whatever, whatever the sport is. Right, uh, it, it's a huge amount of if you're good at it, if you, if you if you take it seriously, it's a huge amount of time and effort. And if you care, and if you care, yeah. right? I mean, <laughs> that's probably number one. <laughs> if you care, if you know what you're doing, uh, it's a huge amount of effort. Uh, and 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 to get a good coach, I, I, what I've said to athletes in the past is, I just I, like I don't think I'd be I, I I have too many other things happening right now, and I just, I don't think it, I, I, I wouldn't be a, I wouldn't amount. be I wouldn't be able to give you the amount of time that you deserve. Uh, and, and it sounds like you're doing it in all the, all the right ways. Yeah. I'm, I've, I've said the same thing with asked, I mean, I've been asked to play hockey again. I haven't played hockey in eight to 10 years. Rob and I grew up playing hockey. Together. And yeah, do I want to? Yeah. I watch the Rangers all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I have a hockey stick and a puck in there and I mess around stick handling, but I can't commit to whatever nights a week. I certainly can't play a 10 o'clock hockey game to wake up at four thirty the next day to coach, that's tough, man. Like the, the the whole the whole gym in the whole gym world. So not only uh, do you have to understand obviously like the exercise science behind it, put a lot of time and effort into uh, the the program that you're doing, but you're also an owner of the gym, which means you you have to have you know maintain the entrepreneurial aspects of it. Uh, generally speaking, you're dealing with people that have normal work schedules, which means you're working either really, really early or really, really late or both. Right. You know, and so it's, it's a really, really tough, tough schedule and tough life, man. But, you know, personal trainers work hard, you know, and they, they uh, I don't think they're given enough credit for, for what they do and what they know. Yeah. The schedules, I mean, at first, uh, in Bay Ridge, I was, I coached a lot a lot longer hours. Uh, just the, the way it was set up, I was coaching so many classes. Uh, I'm not coaching as many classes here, but it's the hours are still basically the same as I'm, uh, doing administrative work. And, uh, if someone needs someone to fill in, I'm it's, can you find someone? If you can't find someone, I'm the guy. Uh, so it's not that I, I don't get angry at it. 
it's, it is what it is. I know what I, I got myself into and I enjoy what I do. Uh, some days are easier than others. Uh, but it took a while to get the team that I have, uh, and be where we want it to be because, uh, not everybody gels together. Not everybody's on that same page and has the same, uh, vision. But right now I have a team that, that is, uh, we have, that's worth his weight, man. That's, that's hard to find two full time, including myself, two full-time coaches. The rest are part-time and they bring their own, uh, expertise to the table. Uh, my fiance, Nikki, uh, she's an acupuncturist by day and she's a former gymnast and she coaches four classes a week. So, uh, we have another two gymnasts, former gymnasts in, in the gym as well. They're both teachers. Uh, we have someone in nursing school. Uh, she runs our social media, which gives me a lot of peace of mind that I'm not doing that because that's a <laughs> that's a big headache to do the all the gym social media. Uh, she does a great job with that. Uh, my other full time coach, uh, he's a he's in his early 40s, so he's got a lot of experience with a more experience in life than me and. B, he has got over a decade of football coaching experience. So he has that field sport. Uh, he played college basketball and played football as well. Uh, and then my business partner is the chiropractor here, uh, soft tissue joint health specialist. So he has so much knowledge that I just constantly absorb. And in turn, being around him for the last four years has just absolutely skyrocketed my my knowledge and my ability to create more in the gym and i'm sure having a uh, an adjustment over here every now and then an, an oh. adjustment right, right around the corner is uh <laughs> it's a nice thing it's, to have. it is nice <laughs> i wonder if that was part of his uh, strategy well crossfit people get hurt all the time maybe if i just set up my you know practice what? that is <laughs> that is the that is the first thing people say so of course <laughs> yeah but it's actually we work the opposite, the opposite. people that come in to the office he puts them on a path to be well and then walks them in the gym and says, we will keep you well. Right. Um, so that's good business. You want to keep them well, you know? Yeah, absolutely. What's really funny was that all my running and triathlon friends used to always like shit on CrossFit, you know, like they get hurt all the time. Like, bro, we get hurt all the time. Right. Too. <laughs> like it's, we're not immune from it. You know, I don't, I don't know a single runner that hasn't been hurt for some significant period. It's at one time or another. And if you haven't been, you haven't been running long enough yet. Like it's coming and it's going to, it's going to fuck you up in the head, man, for a little, for, for a few months or, or however long it oh, takes yeah. to heal up. Cause it's, it's, it's when you get so used to, to, to performing and, and, and putting output out there. Uh, and now all of a sudden it's just taken away from you. It's devastating. Uh, which we we talked about this a little bit before the podcast about you know why do people why are people performing at high levels like why do they want to do that uh, and it's such a it's such a I mean it's it's different for every person I would imagine but it's such a it's such a it's an internal uh, rush or it's 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 something that you I mean it's something you really can't put necessarily into words but it's it's that place that you feel successful at whether you're actually competing to win something or you're just competing at the the level that puts you at that that mental state so do you think it's do you, do you think that there there people are you know like us or do you think we're chasing success or do you think we're chasing the feeling do you think we're yes. chasing the feeling of success yeah absolutely interesting yeah i, I i've always said that i think there's some darwinian aspect to it all I, I think you know somewhere deep down we are we are survival beings that that had to uh, uh suffer in order to just uh, get through the day on a daily basis and i think there's as, a satisfaction in some type of suffering totally totally and i i, I keep saying that i've been saying this a lot lately it's like i think happiness is overrated <laughs> not that not that i don't want to be happy but i i really enjoy the feeling of satisfaction more than happiness happiness to me and at least my definition of it is uh is is is, is a fleeting feeling which is nice, but again, if you can sit back at the end of the day, at the end of the month, at the end of the year, and are you satisfied? And say, I did everything I could this year to accomplish the things that I wanted to accomplish. Whether that's again CrossFit Games, doing an Ironman, right. or providing for my family, or whatever else, 
uh, whatever whatever those goals are, if you can sit back and say, you know, I, I accomplished all those things, it's a really satisfying feeling. And I think that's the secret. I think that's what people are going for. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why people are, are gravitating more than ever toward sports and especially toward hard sports. Um, and I think people like you are out there trying to make them do a, do a good job at it. So yeah. you mentioned your your fiance, and just w- one thing I wanted mm-hmm. to talk about was, and it was one of the things early on that I always really liked about CrossFit was the extent to which it is social. Uh, so I, I mentioned earlier to you that you know you and I could do like I can't lift anywhere near as much as you're lifting, right? But you and I could do a workout next to each other and get the same feelings and the same rush and high five at the end of it and like be you know and have that 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 team camaraderie and, mm-hmm. and, and feel good about ourselves versus you know two people going out for a run. Whereas, you know, if one person's a lot better than the other, they're not together anymore. Same right. for bikes, same at, for swimming, you know. the start. <laughs> right. It's like with, within the first 30 seconds, I'm now no longer with this person, right. right? And so that's one of the things I always really liked about it. And you, as it turns out, met your met your, your future wife. Here. I did. Uh, was, it, was it in the, it was no, it was, it was in Bay Ridge. Okay. All right. Uh, Is she from Bay Ridge? She's from Staten Island. No, oh, it's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we did meet. Uh, it's not... It's not what the the location she wants to, everybody to know we met. Uh, yeah, we met in the gym. But uh, I wouldn't change it any other way. <laughs> of course you met um, in the gym. She, she used to compete with me. Uh, that she has zero interest in that anymore. She just likes to to work out to, to just have her fitness, uh, whether sure. that be on a, on a spin bike or taking some classes uh, or just doing some some different stuff that that I give her to test out. Uh, so her her focus has changed ever since she did graduate uh, grad school and became an acupuncturist. Um, Do you think my, she's she's burnt out on competition just from the years of of gymnastics and then crossfit yeah in, in a way yes do, do, and do you think that's universal do you think there's only like do you think the human spirit can only handle so much high level competition before most yes and there's a there's a select number that are just constantly hungry for more um personally if if i was asked to compete yeah i'm gonna want to and the, but versus me now versus a couple of years ago, I'd sign up, absolutely do it. A couple of years ago, I'm gonna step back and say, "Can I, can I make this work? If not, all right, no big deal." Um, could I just matured, growed? Um, I have other priorities. The athlete in me is not the number one priority. Uh, since I became a gym owner, that is the as far as fitness goes, that's the number one. Uh, and then anything athletic is just bonus. I could tell you're, you're really letting your fitness go. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I joke, but you're probably like, but seriously, I was, I was lifting 30 pounds more than I was. <laughs> no, it's, it's just the, the direction changes. It's, sure. uh, I'm going to try this program to, to test it out and, and learn more. I'm doing one right now. I'm halfway through a 12 week one. Uh, just to experiment with it. Experiment. It's hmm. functional bodybuilding. So it's your classic bodybuilding with some functional fitness uh variations thrown in and when you say functional fitness, are you talking like again like aerobic kind of i'm sorry uh like anaerobic kind of movements or or is is there an aerobic component there's there's both yeah and and similar to what i give this this program does give a uh some direction in the intent and the stimulus and for those that have the experience that i do in as a thinking athlete uh definitely get it a lot more than those just going into it because they they like the uh the package that it was sold at and it's like oh i want to look like that guy and Mm. uh they may not be getting as much out of it um it's also hard when it's not a constant communication like every day in the gym versus it's emails back and forth you're not going to get that true coaching stimulus and uh and the conversation which is tough in that business, but uh, that's why I don't do it. I'm not interested in that. But I have pulled stuff from this program I'm, I'm trying out uh, and used it in class and found some, some success in it and some people really, really like it. So I will be creating a separate program for those that want to do that uh, as complementary to everything else we're doing. 
Sure. So you don't, you know, you, you, you walk the walk. You're not just talking the talk. You, you, you want to try it before you're, oh, before absolutely. you absolutely. There's, there's certain workouts that I'll, I'll give and I, I know the feeling of it cause I've done things similar. Uh, but there's others that I'll either test myself or I'll give to the other coaches and say, can you try this out? I want to, want to know what the, either the time cap should be for it or if I need to change the number of reps or the weight. Uh, yeah, we definitely want to give the product that's, that's proper before it's, it's given to the class. And we do make mistakes here and there of, of maybe that, that workout was too long or maybe the, the weight should have been lighter, uh, or I put too much in the program that day and it kind of rushed it. Uh, and those mistakes will happen here and there, but we learn from them and, uh, make them a lot less often than we used to. That's really good. Yeah. It sounds like you guys have a, a really, a really great gym, a really great program here. Uh, and I'm really curious to see what it's like. I bet you're going to kick my butt in a little while. I might take class with you. Yeah. So what, so the, we'll close on this. So if there's anyone out there, whether you're a runner or a triathlete or just somebody who's looking to get into shape, what advice do you have for them in terms of, uh, getting into CrossFit? Like what, what, you know, what, what anxieties might they have that you want to dispel? And I think we dispelled a few of them already. Uh, but what, what advice do you have for someone looking to get into, uh, the world of CrossFit? Um, ask questions. Uh, don't be, I mean, anyone who is, is hesitant about joining a CrossFit is going to be hesitant to walk in and ask questions, but you want to know you're in the right hands. You have the, the coaches know what they're doing. They have your best interest in mind. Uh, and you, you want to make sure the, the on-ramp process to starting is, is going to be something that is going to set you up for success. Uh, so anyone who's just says, all right, sign up and you could just join in class. You want to be weary about that because are you getting the, the initial attention that's needed, uh, to learn the movements and make sure you're, you're in the right positions, uh, for, the uh the movements you're going to see in class because you're not going to have an eye on you every single moment of the class all right the class is going to be half a dozen to three uh, to like a dozen or 18 people at times uh so yeah you're going to get some attention but you're not going to get one-on-one attention some gyms uh will give you that one one one-on-one attention to start we do that we give four one-on-one sessions for anyone starting so that we can assess the movement, um, teach the movements, make sure that uh, the athlete and the coach is on the same page, and they also get a, a initial assessment for, uh, for their mobility in the clinic with Dr. Jeremy. And then there's constant communication between myself and him all right, this person needs to do X, Y, and Z either before or after class to, for for example, build up their core so that they're putting themselves in a, a safer position in class. You guys and, are more than just a CrossFit gym. Like you're, you're, you're a complete kind of health and well-being experience. That is, that's been the goal, uh, and it's just been coming together. Uh, we are in our third, Jeremy and I are in our third year owning the gym together. Uh, so it, it was a goal from the start and I think that's the, the, the sticky part about what people want and what keeps them coming back is, all right, I'm getting everything I need. We have Cairo acupuncture, we have nutritionists on staff, uh, coaches that want to be here. Uh, I've, I've had coaches in the past on, on my team that are just out for a paycheck and whether I was in a position to have them leave the team or not, it's something I don't agree with. Uh, if you don't want to coach don't for coach. the sake of coaching, don't coach. If you don't want to be here as an athlete, I'm not forcing you to be here. I'm not making you sign up for a year. Uh, so that's another thing. We want to earn the, the trust and earn the money from, from the athlete and make you want to yeah not sign into a contract right. for six months and we are going to give you the value that that we have uh, and if you respect that and and you agree with it you're going to be here 
That's great. So it sounds like if you want to get into CrossFit, you show up to uh, Island Park or CrossFit Island Park. That's that's the place to go. We, I mean, we do have we have members that travel from Huntington, from the Five Towns. Uh, so it's it's pretty cool that what we're doing is being seen. We have members that have left, moved out east, tried out some gyms, and we're like, I'm going to drive. I'm going to spend the the time and the money to to come back here. So that's uh, it makes us. It makes it worth it. I've known you a long time, and I knew this gym was going to be a, a good gym, and and you know, and a, a, a high caliber gym. It's it's you've actually exceeded my expectations with everything you have going on here. Uh, you you know that a good coach and good coaching staff, again, whether it's CrossFit or or, or triathlon or or running, when they have knowledge or at least resources to nutrition, to recovery, to prehab, which is you know, it's like, huge, 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 super huge. Um, not just, you know, instead of, instead of addressing an issue after you get hurt, address the issue before you get hurt. Uh, and you guys have, have, uh, again, resources to address all of that. And it sounds like you guys are doing all the right things. Thanks. We're, uh, certainly hoping to keep this rolling. Yeah, I think we'll do Keep, keep doing what you're doing. I think you guys are going to be here a very long time, but Rob, thank you very much for being here on the inaugural 2020 episode of the personal record podcast. Uh, I'm really excited to get this thing back, uh, up and running. Um, but thanks so much for everything. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right. Tell your tell your whole family I say hello. I will. <laughs>